It may be a last-ditch plea to keep its doors open. Bloomington's co-op grocery, Green Top Grocery, has launched a GoFundMe campaign, partly to offset a reimbursement from the IRS that's on hold indefinitely. Board member Allison Smith and volunteer Melanie Shelato say they need to pay their farmers and other vendors. Shelato tells WGLT's Eric Stock they are also trying to refinance their debt. Whatever the future of Green Top, we are trying to pay the vendors. It's because there is this larger amount out there that we are trying to negotiate, trying to look into everything from grant opportunities to trying to bring that loan local to a bank who might care well whether we live or die. Let's say that that relief money does come through in the near future. You're able to meet your goal for the GoFundMe to be able to sustain at least a little bit longer. Green Top had a major capital campaign about five, six years ago to stay in business. Owners were asked to kick in more. Does Green Top then, if that money comes through, have a sustainable business model that could prevent these kind of desperate appeals in the future? Any business, small business, lives or dies by its leadership and the skills that that leadership brings to the operation. It doesn't seem like Central Illinois is particularly sexy <laughs> to lure <laughs> to, lu- to lure experienced uh, GMs um, to our community. I think that is unfortunate, um, but it has been our reality. So every time we have done searches for GMs, um, national searches, uh, you can get really qualified folks on the coast. You can get them to Chicago. You can get them to the big metropolitan areas. Bloomington is not sexy. Um, and we have struggled to find individuals with the skills um, that would work well for Green Top. And so you can look at it as like, well, for all these years, you still haven't been sustainable. And that is true. However, we have also had tons of turnover. There has not been um, a consistent story about the value that this store brings. There has not been, the the amount spent on marketing has been nil. When you don't tell the story about what makes a co-op special, you end up just people going, well, your strawberries are more expensive. And they might be a little more expensive. To focus in on the marketing part of it, is there anything that has held Green Top back from spending more in marketing. I I can't help but see some comments I see on social media that people were not aware that you didn't have to be an owner to actually shop there. How does the general public walking around town not know that? Yeah. And and I'll be honest, that has been a eight-year source of, uh, you know, a a personal thing. As as a marketing person, um, there have been times where um, uh, I've been asked to help and have been able to help and I will point to the turnaround plan in 2018 which was very well crafted we had an entire marketing strategy we implemented that marketing strategy and within four months we grew sales 30 percent the fact is that the there the audience is here the will is here the money is here people will spend money if they understand what it's for and with that growing base, we are then able to do the other things that our mission um, calls us to do, which is making good food more accessible, whatever that looks like for, um, you know, possibly getting food into areas where transportation is an issue. Like there's all these things we could be doing, but it does begin no margin, no mission. That is true. What is the plan now for marketing to tell that story that you say will bring the customers back? Part of that was begun. At a certain point, we looked at where the numbers were and we said, well, where do we focus our energy? Um, Because we almost, you have to like fight the closest fire. And the closest fire was, does it make sense to focus on a full pro forma marketing plan when we need to make sure the doors will be open to actually execute? There is a path forward. We have to to deal with the financial part first and um, if we can't get runway from our lenders, there's not a GM willing to step in necessarily and say, I'll take on this. It's kind of a catch-22. Yeah, We need the stability to get a good GM, and we need a good GM for mm-hmm. lenders to be willing to work with us. I want to get back to the uh, point, uh, Melody, that you'd raised about uh, the co-op culture in 
perhaps not being as strong as Green Top maybe had envisioned. I know when the idea of this cooperative grocery store was hatched over a decade ago, there was a tremendous amount of fanfare behind it. The campaign locally was celebrated. It had broad community support and fundraising prowess. We just wonder what had happened from there to to when it opened and those expectations of $12 million in sales mm-hmm. never never being fulfilled. There is a, a national entity that um, opens cooperatives um, you're part of to in order to sort of create buying power, uh, things like that. We were selected to be part of that program. It was a huge win. We were thrilled. Um, the actuality of it was that they were not particularly dialed in to our community um, or any community. It, it, this was not exclusive to us. And there were a lot of things about our opening that, um, you know, hindsight being 2020, um, there was not a lot of strategy behind the prices. There was not a lot of investigating the competitive landscape. Um, and so, unfortunately, we opened um, with some fairly tone-deaf pricing. And that wasn't those of us from the community choosing that. That was us putting our faith in an organization that didn't really quite deliver as promised. Tone-deaf tone deaf isn't too high. Yeah, yeah. As we continue on Sound Ideas, as we're talking with Melody Shelto and Allison Smith from Green Top Grocery, one of the data points that came out in Green Top's plea to its owners recently was that the average basket size, how much people are spending on each trip to Green Top, is about $30. It feels like your average customer is treating Green Top as a convenience store as opposed to something that they're using for their their weekly food consumption, diet, etc. Is that a cost issue? Is that a variety issue? Uh, first, I, I want to clarify that the $30 basket size is actually not bad at all for a store our size. Um, I, I just want to sort of level set on that. I think our goal um, has typically been like maybe 33 um, as an average. So... Um, and a lot of times, and, and I see plenty of people who are checking out with, with full carts, I think where you see that offset is because we are on the trail, which was by design, um, you get people who run in for drinks, you um, people who pop in for lunch, which is, you know, maybe they're spending $11. And that's what's actually shifting that is that people are using the store for a wide variety of um, yeah, so that basket size might be a little bit deceiving. Is there a timeline for next steps for Green Top, and can the grocery stores survive this? Literally week by week. That is the trick question. I mean, that's the that's the million dollar question. Is it is literally week by week right now? That was Allison Smith and Melanie Shelato from Green Top Grocery speaking with WTLT's Eric Stock.